Hi guys, welcome to part two of the Electronics for Beginners guide, yeah? Hope you watched part one, and if you did, at the end, you know I asked you all a question, which is, if we know that electricity is a flow of electrons through conductors and resistors, and electrons are negative, so we know that the current is flowing from the negative term of the battery, for example, to the positive. Why is that opposite to what we already know, which is that current flows from positive to negative? Yeah, these two facts contradict each other. So this is more of a bit of a history lesson, really, but it is quite interesting and it will come to something relevant. So hope you enjoy this and then let's see where we end up. So the confusion all goes back to the mid 1700s. In 1752, scientist named Benjamin Franklin conducted some experiments and proved that electricity flows in a current. It flows from one place to another. Franklin, by the way, did not discover electricity. Earlier in the 1700s, around the mid-1700s, the 1750s, some years before, scientists already knew about the phenomena of electricity. They understood the phenomena existed, but they didn't really understand what it was. And then not until Franklin came along with his experiments and his theories was it discovered that electricity actually flows as a current. So Franklin figured out electricity is flowing and it's obviously flowing in one direction or another and he took the intuitive position that electricity flows from where there is an excess of something to where there is a lack of something. So he determined that electricity flows from the positive where there is this excess of something to the negative where there's less of it in the same way that water flows out of a lake and rolls down the hill as a river okay so he came up with this direction of current flow and then for many many years in fact over a hundred years this was considered to be the correct theory Hundreds of books were written, thousands of papers were written, universities and scientists studied this, and everybody knew that electricity flows in a current from positive to negative. And it all was okay, many inventions and things were built and they all worked based on this theory, everything was working. And then in 1869, A German scientist, Johann Hittorf. Yes, with two N's and two T's. I've just checked that, okay? My German not being perfect, although Detlef is helping me. Oh, that's another topic. So, Hittorf noticed that if he took a vacuum tube, so this was basically a glass vessel in which all the air had been expelled, so inside was a vacuum. And he put electrodes in the vacuum tube, and he applied enough voltage for many, many batteries in a series, okay, enough voltage to here, that something would flow through the tube. This is not a conductor, it's not a piece of wire, but by applying enough voltage, he could get electricity, current, put a resistor in here, we can measure the voltage drop, we can measure the current flow, and he figured out that some sort of rays or waves were traveling through the vacuum tube to cause current to flow. Moving forward from this, about 10 years, 1879, Edison, Thomas Edison, patented the electric light bulb, the first commercially usable electric light bulb. He didn't invent the light bulb, by the way. 
about 70 years before the electric arc lamp which did emit a very bright light was invented and there were several other filament type lamps or incandescent lamps using copper filaments and platinum filaments that were made 30 or 40 years before this but Thomas Edison basically made the first commercially usable electric light bulb okay and around this time 1879 to around about 1883 Edison was working on a problem which basically was causing his light bulbs to blacken on the inside even though it contained a vacuum and there were no particles inside there it was just a vacuum but they were blackening and Edison read about Hittorf's discovery so what he did or one of his technicians did was to put another electrode a plate a metal plate inside the light bulb so this is the filament which is hot and this is the plate and what he discovered is that if we use the high voltage battery again to apply a large negative voltage to the filament that current would flow this way something was being radiated by the hot filament and flowing through the vacuum to the plate so this was working on this experiment and again he worked out that if you reverse the direction of this put the negative here and the positive here no current will flow so he basically understood that whatever was flowing was negatively charged but at the time he didn't know what it was wind on another 15 years 1879 and another scientist jj thompson American scientist was experimenting with cathode ray tubes that was this basically is high voltages and this effect which was actually known as the Edison effect and conducting more experiments he discovered the electron and at this point scientists realized that electricity is the flow of electrons it's a flow from negative to positive the problem was of course that by now 150 years have passed since Franklin first formulated that electricity flowed in current from positive to negative and all of a sudden scientists discovered that that isn't correct it flows from negative to positive so what did they do well basically the scientific community decided that trying to reverse this polarity because everybody knows everybody knows which way electricity flows yeah and many things have been built and many experiments have been conducted which worked based on this direction of flow so the scientific community decided basically while it would be much too much effort to rewrite all these books and reverse all the polarities and change all the university courses and all the lecturers and all the engineers and everybody else and get them to all agree that the flow is this way so it was the best thing to do was just to leave it the way it is because in most realistic scenarios it doesn't actually matter which way it's flowing there's a couple of things i would draw from this one is never base your decisions on what it says in old books that were written before people really understood stuff yeah don't use that as a basis to understand what's happening in the world yeah and the second one is even if you know the old book is wrong if you like you can still believe it but it's still wrong uh, so that's where I come from this okay so this is why we have this situation where conventional current because this was a convention the convention was that it flows that way so conventional current 
flows positive to negative. Really, the electron current flows from negative to positive. Okay. This, by the way, is where we get the word electronics from. Yeah, because electronics is based on this. The only time you will notice that there is an error in conventional current is when you look at the symbols or some of the symbols for the electronic components. And you'll notice that a lot of the symbols contain arrows in them, or shapes of arrows, yeah, we'll look what these are later. But we get symbols with arrows in, and you'll notice that the arrow is pointing the wrong way. It's not pointing in the direction that the electrons are flowing. It's pointing in the direction of conventional current. But those of us who still know this is the truth, we can live with that. We understand why it's like that. And what I would say basically is use whichever convention suits you best. Okay. If you prefer to work in conventional current, and I work in conventional current, so all this tutorial will be based in conventional current, do so. If you prefer to work in electron or electric current, negative, yeah, electron flow, use that. And it doesn't mean that you are right and I'm wrong, or that I'm right and you are wrong. We're just looking at the same thing from different directions, but the conclusions will all be the same. It doesn't matter in that respect. All I would say is, whichever one you prefer to use, use it, stick with it. Do not mix the two because it becomes very confusing very rapidly. And don't believe whichever you think you want to work with means that somebody else is wrong because they work in the other one. Okay, so that is the explanation of why we have current conventional in this direction, electron current in the other direction. Okay, so that'll do for this one, short one. Let's keep these nice and short lessons. Next lesson, let's have a look at current because at the moment we're talking about current flowing in one direction. Does it have to do that? What about when the current is flowing in either direction or even going backwards and forwards? Huh? We'll talk about that in the next one. See you soon, guys.